Are you searching for the latest on psoriatic arthritis treatments? Are you interested in what's new and promising? Then you are in the right place. In this video, I will review the most recent advancements in psoriatic arthritis treatments. I will be referencing the 2021 guidelines and many studies to give you the most updated overview in the treatment of psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis. Remember, each treatment should be tailored to patient needs, and factors like obesity can influence the response to your treatment. Rheumatologistoncall.com Psoriatic arthritis is a type of arthritis that affects 25-30% to 30 of people with psoriasis. In about 10 years of skin disease, patients with skin psoriasis may develop joint disease which can affect their joints, but also the tendons. If you want to learn more about psoriatic arthritis, you can watch this video in my channel where I discuss about the most common signs of psoriatic arthritis. Starting treatment early for psoriatic arthritis is important, but the goal of the treatment is also crucial. The treatment in psoriatic arthritis has to achieve minimal or very minimal disease activity which will include to reduce the number of tender and swollen joints and to minimize the skin lesions and to manage the patient pain to become very minimal. Treatment types. Now, the key thing to understand about psoriatic arthritis treatment is that it's not one size fits all approach. Imagine wearing a shoe that doesn't fit pretty comfortably, right? The same concept applies to treatment. It should be tailored to your needs and to your condition severity. Think of these treatments as weapons in your arsenal against psoriatic arthritis. You have to know how to use these weapons and when, and also understand the potential consequences, as well as the risk and the benefits and the potential side effects. There are several types of treatments and their efficacy can differ based on whether the patient is dealing with synovitis, enthesitis, or dactylitis. Now let's explore them. Let's start with the oldest treatment for psoriatic arthritis, methotrexate. This is a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug very frequently used in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. This drug had the role to reduce inflammation. Methotrexate, it is still used in many patients with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, and it is the preferred drug in many patients. It is inexpensive, and it is why many insurance companies request us, the physicians, to start the therapy before trying anything else that is more expensive. It may work in about 40 to 60% of patients. However, it can lead to side effects like nausea, stomach pain, diarrhea, or hair loss. If you want to learn more about methotrexate, you can watch this video in my channel. TNF inhibitors. TNF inhibitors like adalimumab or Humira, etanercept or Embrel, these are drugs that block TNF, which is a protein that can cause inflammation into your body. Adalimumab was shown to work very well for patients with psoriatic arthritis, dactylitis, and enthesitis. Usually, these TNF inhibitors are recommended to patients when they fail therapy with methotrexate or if they do not get a good response to methotrexate or they cannot tolerate it. Interestingly, there are some studies that show that when methotrexate is added to adalimumab or Humira or etanercept, the response is even better, rather than using monotherapy. Adalimumab plus methotrexate is favored versus the monotherapy with Humira. Now, if you want to learn more about adalimumab or Humira, I have another video in my channel, so check it out. IL-1223 inhibitors. Ustekinumab or Stellara is commonly used to treat skin disease and it can have some beneficial effect on the joints as well. IL-17 inhibitors like Secuhinumab 
x e kje gjë map, b me kje gjë map. IL-17 is a cytokine, a molecule that is produced by many immune system cells that is known to create inflammation. It seems that in people with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, IL-17 plays an important role in the pathogenesis of this disease. So inhibiting this molecule with a relatively new class of medication that we call IL-17 inhibitors was a promising therapy. And it does work. Now, this is a fascinating class of medication that has been proven to make wonders for the skin psoriasis, but it is also very efficacious for the joints. Let me tell you about a few studies with IL-17 inhibitors. The SPIRIT trial compared Ixacuzumab, or TALS, versus Adalimumab, Humira, and it did show that Ixacuzumab was actually superior to Adalimumab in clearing the skin, but it was as efficacious as Adalimumab in treating arthritis. The other drug in this class is called Secukinumab, or Cosentix. In the EXCEED trial, when compared again to Adalimumab, or Humira, it was showed similar results. It was superior in treating the skin and as good as Humira in treating the arthritis. When researchers look to see if Cosentix is good in treating axial psoriatic arthritis or psoriatic arthritis affecting the spine, they show in this trial maximize that the drug was clearly superior to placebo. Now, are you still here with me? A newer drug in this class of medication is called bimekizumab. This drug has both IL-17A and IL-17F effect, which means that can inhibit different types of molecules and different receptors and can induce inflammation. What is good about this new medication, bimekizumab, is that it has similar effects like other IL-17 inhibitors on the skin and joints but has better results with complete resolution of dactylitis and enthesitis. However, this medication is still not approved in the US. Now, the most common side effects of IL-17 inhibitors are nasopharyngitis, headaches, injection site reactions, and more rarely, inflammatory bowel disease with bloody diarrhea. This is just a short list of side effects, so if you experience any side effects, please contact your physician to discuss them in detail. IL-23 inhibitors. IL-23 inhibitors like Ducelcumab, Trenfia, and Risankizumab, Skyrizi. This is another class of medication that is a new treatment for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. These drugs have been shown to improve fatigue and skin, but also arthritis, and they have very low rates for serious infections. T-cell modulator. Abatacept is the drug that disrupts the inflammation process at the cellular level, and it was also used for patients with psoriatic arthritis. Targeted synthetic DMARDs. Now, this category of drugs include JAK inhibitors, TIC2 or tyrosine kinase 2 inhibitors and PDE4 inhibitors like apremilast. JAK inhibitors, these are drugs that can decrease the level of multiple cytokines which are involved in inflammation. Tofacitinib or Zelgens is shown to improve the skin and the psoriatic arthritis symptoms, while Rimvoke or UPA. Tacitinib has demonstrated better results for skin, for enthesitis and dactylitis, and it was also shown to inhibit the radiographic progression. However, it's important to note that JAK inhibitors should be avoided in patients that have increased cardiovascular events because they have an increased risk for thrombosis. They may also increase the risk of herpes, zoster, and possibly malignancy. That is why the guidelines recommend the use of JAK inhibitors after TNF inhibitors. Now, TIC2 inhibitors, Ducracitinib, which inhibits the tyrosine kinase 
2 pathway, they decrease interferon gamma, IL-12, IL-23, and they are still in phase 2 trials. But in phase 2 trials, they demonstrated good effect on psoriatic arthritis and on the skin. Now, preliminary results show that they have improved the skin, the arthritis, and they also have a safety profile that is promising with no reported cases of herpes zoster, thrombosis, opportunistic infections, or malignancies. Unlike JAK inhibitors, this medication does not have to be preceded by TNF-alpha inhibitors. A Premilast or a Tesla, it is not considered to be a biologic medication, but rather a targeted synthetic DMARD and can have beneficial effects both on the skin and the arthritis. However, the use may be limited by gastrointestinal side effects like nausea, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and it has to be avoided if you suffer from depression or you have a history of depression. What if these drugs do not work? Now, you may be wondering, what if these treatments don't work? That is a difficult situation that I have in my clinic. So, it is important to have a physician that can take the time and can understand why is the treatment not working. Maybe it's related to the dose. Maybe it is related to how you give yourself the injection. Maybe is that you need to address your weight. Maybe it is another disease like osteoarthritis or musculoskeletal pain like fibromyalgia causing the pain. But if it is still that psoriatic arthritis is not controlled, then current research suggests that combining a premilast with a biologic or a JAK inhibitor could be a potential strategy. However, this approach is still under study and there is need for clear indications to be defined. In conclusion, while psoriatic arthritis can be a challenging condition to manage, the future of its treatment is very promising. New and more targeted therapies are being developed and we are learning more and more about how to optimize the current treatments. As always, it is crucial to have access to a physician that can help you. In my practice, rheumatologist on call, that is what I do every day. I listen to my patients and I help them to the best of my abilities, breaking geographical barriers. Yes, you don't need to travel to see me. Check out my website to learn which are the states that I cover and give me a call if you need me. So, psoriatic arthritis warriors, stay strong, Stay hopeful and remember, you're not alone in this battle. Let's continue to learn and grow together. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with others who you think they might benefit, and don't forget to subscribe to support my educational efforts. Until next time, stay healthy. Thank you for watching. rheumatologistoncall.com